are halfway through Barley's, the Burners, first year. And in that time, she has graduated two puppy training classes and is now in big dog training and barking as we speak. And while her recall still needs plenty of work, her party tricks, like roll over and sit pretty, are on point. So this morning, joining us to talk a little bit about a few things going on. Hi, Barley. Barley's doing so well. We love having her here. And of course, Catherine Newman is her trainer. And Catherine Newman has a very well-trained puppy next to her. So tell me who you have. We have Mr. Rem with us today. And oh. he is a four-year-old golden retriever. Oh, come on over here, Barley. You can't see Rem right now. You need to sit right here. Okay, so we are going to talk today. We've been loving the segments, and we're really learning a lot. And all of our viewers are really appreciative of your um, information. So today, we're going to talk about distraction. And we're going to talk about the dogs moving in public places, like on parks and whatnot. So let's go to the first video. So we have Rem passing Barley in, um, obviously, in a park. So what's going on here? So it's summertime and we all want to walk our dogs, but in order to walk our dogs in public, they need to be well behaved. And dogs just don't become well behaved on their own. We have to train them. So what we've got here is a fairly classic setup with Barley and Remy, where we are requiring Barley to do sit stays as Remy approaches. This starts to lay the foundation for control on walks. If we can't control our dog on a sit, we're not going to be able to control him healing. So in this clip, we see, Rem, or we see Barley practicing sit stays as Remy approaches a number of times over, and as she does a great job, she gets rewarded. That's wonderful. Okay, so now we have Barley passing Remy. Yes, um, and we're just reversing roles. Again, um, we have to teach our dogs what our expectations are. So if we simply go for a walk with our dogs and we're not communicating to them what we expect, they're going to be out of control. Wow, they did really well. Yep, so we're going to make this easy for Barley by keeping Remy on a sit. He's calm, he's not jumping all over the place, he's not trying to lunge and sniff her. And so we make it easy for Barley to learn her lesson. And then over time, both of the dogs can greet one another on a walk. So I have this happen all the time. I have a 10-year-old burner, as you know, and we pass dogs all the time. And she's so old, she doesn't care much anymore, but a lot of time dogs really do care. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have to understand how to do this, how to actually go by a dog and, and have your dog not lunge and all that, right? Because it's not, it's not safe for you, it's not safe for the other dog. Correct. I mean, we need our dogs to be under control, and there seems to be an epidemic of, can my dogs meet? And it's like, no, a dog needs to be able to walk past another dog. Not all dogs are friendly. You're right. And you know what? I always I love uh, the fact that you just said that because you know what? It is cordial to say hello. But when I'm walking my dog, I kind of need to go for the walk and I don't really want them to meet. Correct. Because yes. then again, you know, you just never know. Right. All right. We have great questions coming okay. in from our viewers, Catherine. So Bonnie has a seven month old golden doodle and the seven month old golden doodle refuses to get into her SUV. He's too big for her to lift and she's tried treats, but nothing seems to work. So sometimes with these dogs, we need to take a look at a ramp. So a ramp might be an option. And when you start with your ramp, um, instead of putting it up on the ledge of the SUV, maybe just put it on a low step so that our puppy can learn to walk up a low grade and then from there go a little bit higher. The other thing is sometimes, and I don't, don't necessarily know that this is a fact with this dog, but maybe there might be something going on orthopedically. So you might want to get your dog checked out by the vet as well. Okay. But I suspect we, if we go with a ramp, we go with some treats and patients, we'll get them out. All right, so we have a few questions coming in from a few viewers, and they're talking about dogs barking at noises in their homes and at other dogs passing their homes. So how do you train dogs not to do that? I do a lot of redirection. So I want my dogs to bark if somebody comes up to the door. But if, it's, if it gets to be nuisance barking, then I want them to stop. So if my dogs are barking at the door or at the window, a couple things is I'll have them on a leash. Um, if they start to bark, I'm going to go and either tug on their leash or maybe touch their rib and say, hey, over here, and then guide them back into the room I'm at. Now, I'm a huge believer in a downstay. And so with that being said, Remy, sit. Um, I would put the dogs on a downstay and tell them, hey, if you bark, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna have to do a downstay around the house. That's a good point. That's a Stay. very good point. Okay, Tammy has a one-year-old Chihuahua, and sh the Chihuahua will not come to her when called and sometimes runs the opposite direction. He is trained in all other ways, but he just doesn't come when he's called. I think, one years old. I think they skipped a step. Okay. And there's a huge step with recall where your dog is on a long line. And outside, that might mean 30 feet. In the house, it might mean 12 feet. 
your dog certainly knows the command, but what we need to do is whenever we give the command, we need to enforce it. So that long line, that little long cord, allows us that if we tell the dog to come when called, we can enforce it. You're coming in. Okay, such a good point. So have that leash in the house and keep working yes. on that pulling when you're saying come, come, and then of course um, treat yes. them or yes. you know yes. reward them with a pet or a treat. Yes. All right, Florence has a question about her 10-month-old Yorkie. He has uh, he was house trained, but now is actually having some accidents when they leave. She also said another older dog has occasionally been doing the same thing. <laughs> So kind of a new thing that, she, that, that yes. after training. And I would say at 10 months, that dog's probably too young to be roaming around the house when they're not home. When yeah. they're not home. So he needs to be either crated or gated in a room. Um, we may have made his world too big too soon. So Yorkies are really hard to housebreak. So he might still need to be gated in an area. And with pooping, uh, generally if we have a full meal, if we go for a walk, we can void. So we should be able to avoid that. That's such a good point because again, if you just gate them, then you can protect your house. Yes. And at the same time, you're kind of closing that world yes. for that dog and then making it maybe easier for them. Correct. Good point. Our last question is from Bethany. She says her one and a half year old neutered lab sometimes tenses up, looks scared and growls at family members. Oh. He's usually happy, but when he growls, they give him direction like lay down or no. Should they continue to redirect at that point? I would strongly recommend this family to have a, a full physical at their veterinarian. It sounds like at 10 years of age, he's been a wonderful dog. Up no, to this one and a half. Oh, one and a half. Wow. Okay. So let's make sure he's neutered. Okay. Okay. So that's an important he thing. He is. Yep. Then the other thing is quality training. And then if we're having aggression issues like this on a one and a half year old dog, My goodness. I, I would work with a professional trainer because there could be lots of things going on. He could have an injury. Like, or like an older dog, but there could be other things as well. So I would still take him into the vet and have a full uh, exam done on him and some blood work. I'm by no means a veterinarian, but that would be the first thing that I would check. And you know what? That's nothing to fool around with because no. aggression can be, a, I mean, really, right. really dangerous. Right. And so if it's only one and a half, that's such a good point to Especially do that. Especially at one and a half. No flowers yes. for you, Barley, but you are sweet. We love you. And you know what? How good did the dogs do today? They did okay. They did okay. They did okay. You, you, know, you, you are very good at this. So for me, I feel it's pretty good. Barley is, of course, coming along. You know what? Next month, we're going to be talking about downstays and which come in, of course, handy when you want to bring your dog along during uh, the patio season, maybe to, you know, a brewery. Barley goes to breweries all the time, we understand, with her, uh, with her parents. 